Good afternoon, jury members. Uh, today I am here to present a case report and topic. It's a rare case of bilateral symmetrical temporoparietal extradural hematoma in road traffic accidents. And I am Dr. Chandrakala, junior resident in the Department of Forensic Medicine and Toxicology, Ames Hotinda. And these are all my faculty members, Aklesh Patak sir, HOD, Ajay sir, Jyoti ma'am, and Ratan sir, Gurpit Singh sir. And coming to my case report introduction, extradural hematoma is a type of intracranial hemorrhage in which the blood is accumulated within the potential space between the outer layer of dura mater and the inner table of the skull. Intracranial epidural hematoma occurs in approximately 2% of patients with head injuries and 5 to 15% of patients with fatal head injuries. Intracranial epidural hematoma is considered to be the most serious complication of head injury requiring immediate diagnosis and surgical intervention to save the life of the patient. The autopsy findings of extradural hematoma are an uncommon consequence of head injury and bilateral symmetrical extradural hematoma is extremely rare. The incidence of bilateral symmetrical extradural hematomas account for less than 5% of all entities of extradural hematomas. The cases of acute symmetrical bilateral epidural hematoma are reported clinically but the autopsy diagnosis of the same is rarely reported. Coming to the case history, a 35 year old woman brought to the casualty department with history of head injury during road accident. She was unconscious since then and was having bleeding from right ear and continuous episodes of vomiting. On neurological examination, the GCS score was E1, V3 and M1 with pupils dilated, fixed and not reactive to light. The patient was declared dead after conservative management and the body was sent for autopsy examination. Coming to the autopsy findings, which we are mostly interested, the autopsy was conducted on the same day afternoon and during the external examination, we found that the deceased was wearing light blue sari, which was stained with blood at places. Deceased was averagely built and nourished and rigor mortis was present over upper half of the body. Postmortem staining was developed in back and dependent parts, but not fixed. Multiple grazed abrasions of size varying from 0.5 to 5 into 4 centimeters to 2 centimeters into 5 centimeters were present on the both sides of upper limbs, which are mostly on right side compared to left side. Dried blood crusts were seen in the right ear canal and diffuse swelling was present over both areas of both parietal areas of the scalp. On opening the skull, dark red color contusions were found in the scalp tissues over both temporoparietal areas. On further examination, a commutative fracture of the right temporal and a linear fracture of left temporal bone were seen. On opening the skull, convex extradural hematomas were observed symmetrically over the both temporoparietal areas of the brain as shown in the coming photograph. This is the photograph which we took uh, during autopsy and the hematoma which was accumulated it was more on right side comparative to left side but it is a rare finding the volume of right side extradural hematoma was 180 cc while the volume of left side hematoma was 72 cc both edh were dark red in color and rubbery in consistency and the underlying surface of the brain was showing a localized concavity on both temporoparietal areas a diffuse subdural hemorrhage and patchy areas of subarachnoid hemorrhage were also seen over both frontoparietal temporal convexities of the brain. There were signs suggestive of infratentorial herniation of brain parenchyma over basal parts of brain. The cause of death in this case given as craniocerebral damage following blunt trauma to the head after autopsy examination. Coming to the discussion part, the dura is a tough grayish membrane which firmly attaches to the inner table of the skull bone and provides a good support to the blood vessels. Even after traumatic injury to vessels in this area, it doesn't allow to accumulate a large amount of blood. Clinically also, deterioration of the patient does not take a rapid course due to lucid interval. In majority of such cases, immediate diagnosis using NCT is made and urgent surgical intervention is done to save the life of the patient. That might be the reason for higher incidences of extradural hematoma in clinical studies and lesser in autopsy studies. EDH is the least common type of intracranial hemorrhage and it presents at both sides of brain 
in a symmetric manner is extremely rare. In present case, dark red color contusions were found in the scalp tissues over both temporoparietal areas, indicating that the trauma was bilateral in these areas and leads to a bilateral extradural hematoma. In the case presented here, large size of bilateral extradural hematomas, uh, 12 centimeter and 9 centimeter in diameter, might be due to rupture of an underlying branches of middle meningeal arteries in these areas. And coming to the conclusion of this case report, the autopsy findings of EDH is common, but bilateral symmetrical EDH is extremely rare and can be missed clinically, especially when it is present in association with other types of intracranial hemorrhages. In all these cases, an immediate diagnosis and urgent surgical interventions is required to save the life of the patient. These are some of the references which I included in this report. Thank you.